So you now know how to solve quadratic equations by factoring. Um, we're going to take it a little further and do two extra examples of how uh, factored form and quadratic functions are related to each other. So the first one we're going to look at says use factored form to graph a quadratic function. Um, now to me this is a little silly because honestly if I gave you something like f of x equals x squared minus 2x minus 8, uh, you can just find the axis of symmetry, just graph it like normal. Um, so you don't necessarily need to know this way, uh, but it, to me it's interesting how the two things are related, so we're going to go through it. So step one says factor the related quadratic equation. Uh, the related equation is when you take that and set it equal to zero, so zero equals x squared minus 2x minus 8. And now we can factor it. So 0 equals, uh, we need two numbers that multiply to negative 8 and add to negative 2. So that would be x minus 4 and x plus 2. And now we have factored it. So from there, using the zero product property, we can determine the solutions of the equation. So x is 4 and x is negative 2. Now we also know that the solutions of the equation are the x-intercepts of that related function. So I can plug 4 and negative 2 as the x-intercepts. Then it says find the coordinates of the vertex. Okay, well we know that these two x-intercepts are mirrored uh, across from each other, across that axis of symmetry. So this one's actually pretty easy to do. We can just kind of find that halfway point. So the halfway point would be at negative one. However, um, what you can also do, especially if it's gonna end up being a fraction, uh, you can just find the average of the two intercepts. So if I can add together, oop, I just made it bigger. I can add together negative two and four, which are my two intercepts, okay, and take that sum and divide it by 2, that's how you calculate average. So negative 2 plus 4 is 2, 2 divided by 2 is 1, okay, we already said that the axis of symmetry was going to be at x equals 1, so I'm just going to draw it in, and then we can plug in that x coordinate to find the y coordinate, so I have 1 squared minus 2 times 1 minus 8, this is 1 minus 2 minus 8, um, that'd be negative 1, and negative 1 minus 8 is negative 9. So the vertex is at 1, negative 9. I have my two intercepts, so I'm going to take my points and connect them with the parabola. And that is how you can graph uh, a quadratic function using factored form. Okay, and our second example, uh, we're going to write the factored form of a quadratic function. So step one is to find the intercepts, and we have our graph down here. Our intercepts are at negative 5 and 1. Now we're going to kind of work backwards and write that in factored form. So if I know my answers are negative 5 and 1, that must mean, I'm going to say f of x, it's going to be x plus 5, because if you solved it, that would give you the negative 5, and x minus 1. Uh, but now the thing is, there could be some a value. I mean, there's going to be an a value. Um, sometimes that a value is just 1. Sometimes it would actually be another number. So we need to figure out what that a value is. And to do that, we're going to use a third point. Now, in this one, they happen to give us that vertex. But really, it could be any point along that parabola. Um, like there's a nice point right there. Looks like the y-intercept. Um, you could use that reflected point over there. OK, so really, any other point can be used. Um, but because they give us that vertex, let's use that one. So we're going to plug this in temporarily as our x and our y. OK, remember, f of x is just the same thing as y. And we're going to solve for the a. OK. Kind of like when we plug things into um, slope-intercept form and find the missing b. In this case, we're just finding that missing a. So our y is negative 9, 
We're going to keep a there because we don't know what it is. And then negative 2 plus 5 times negative 2 minus 1. Okay, and then we can solve the parentheses. So we have negative 9 equals a times 3 times negative 3. And negative 9 is a times negative 9. And I think you can see what's happening here. If not, you can always divide both sides by that. And we find that A does indeed equal one. Um, I can tell that quickly from my graph um, using that rate of change pattern, because as X increases from the vertex by one, that Y value jumps up by one. And we know that in the parent function, Okay, it's going to jump by one, then three, then five. So in this case, that a will be equal to one. Um, but if you can't tell from the graph, then you can always just plug things in and find that missing a. So final answer, uh, it's going to be f of x equals a is one. So to me, it doesn't make sense to write the one. So I'm going to say x plus five times x minus one. And that is our function.